Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel for another Final Cut Pro tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at how we can fake a parallax effect in Final Cut Pro. Much like the Ken Burns effect, the parallax effect adds movement to your still image to animate it, and it adds depth to your image by separating the foreground and the background. This effect is normally achieved in After Effects or Motion by employing a 3D camera to move through a scene, but since Final Cut Pro doesn't have a 3D camera, we'll just have to fake it. Before we can animate our still image, we have to separate our subject from the background. For this I prefer to use Pixelmator, which can be downloaded from the App Store for a very reasonable price. Let's select our image and open it in Pixelmator. Once open, select the Quick Selection tool and use it to select our subject. If you need to add to your selection, hold down the Shift key to select the missed parts. Once your subject is selected, Right click inside the selection and select cut and paste as layer. This splits our image into two layers, one with our subject and one with the background. Now let's deselect our subject layer and use the clone tool to fill in the hole left by the cutout. This is an important step because when we animate our image we want to make sure the background appears as one seamless image. We don't have to fill in the entire hole, just around the edges. Once done, we can export our image as a Photoshop file by selecting File, Export, and selecting Photoshop. When we import our file into Final Cut Pro, it appears with a Layers icon in the top left corner. Now if we drop the clip into our timeline and double click on it, Final Cut Pro reveals the layers in the clip so we can edit them individually. Our default clip duration is 60 seconds, which is much too long. Let's set our playhead at approximately 5 seconds, select the blade tool, blade both clips, and delete the extra 55 seconds. Now let's select our subject layer and animate it by zooming in on it. Press the up arrow to move the playhead to the start of the clip and the right arrow key to select the first frame in our clip. Open the inspector and in the transform menu, add a keyframe to the scale of our clip. Now press the down arrow to move to the end of the clip left arrow to select the last frame, and in the inspector, enter 130% for scale. Because we added a keyframe at the beginning, our subject will zoom in from the original size to 130% over the length of our clip. Now let's select the background layer and apply the same animation to it. But this time, select 110% for a final scale instead of 130. Scaling in at different rates will separate our background and the subject and add depth to our image. Let's play it back and see how it looks. Another thing we can do to make this effect look even better is throw our background out of focus as we zoom in. With the background clip still selected, open the effects browser, select the blur category, and apply the focus blur to our clip. Now in the viewer, click and drag the center button down until it's over the edge of the sand, since it's closest to the subject. And in the inspector, Set the width to 100%. We'll leave the amount at 30%, navigate to the last frame of our clip, and set a keyframe for the amount of blur. Now let's go to the first frame in our clip and set the blur amount to 0. Let's take a look and see what we got. By separating our subject from the background and animating them at different rates, we were able to take a still image and add some movement and depth to it to make it much more exciting. And all this is possible by using a combination of Final Cut Pro and Pixelmator. If you enjoy this video, please let me know by liking, commenting and sharing this with your friends. Also make sure to check out the rest of my channel for more Final Cut Pro tutorials. New videos release weekly, so be sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss them. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you back next week.